What are all the different impacts, do you think, of Boris Johnson's visit to Ukraine, to Kyiv? Well, first of all, it was indeed very uplifting for Ukrainian people that uh, we get the support and not only by words, but by actual actions. So uh, people were surprised, people were uh, extremely happy and uh, the news were all over the place. However, uh, despite the promises that uh, Prime Minister Johnson was giving on the support and additional weaponry, we still did not hear that we are getting the heavy weaponry that we need. As you know, Ukraine is getting ready to this battle in the East. Uh, Russia is gathering forces there. So we anticipate it will be Lord of the Ring level battle, good versus evil. Everybody is gathering their resources and forces, and we do need uh, the heavy machinery, weapons, uh, fighter jets, everything that we have been asking since day one. Mm. And uh, as of right now, we are getting uh, support. We are getting aid. We are getting humanitarian support. But we are not getting the things that will really allow us to win the war. And on the sanctions point, uh, there is also so many loopholes there. I could give you an example. Over the last month of this terrifying war, of the terror and atrocities that Russian soldiers are committing uh, on Ukrainian soil, European countries have paid Russia $35 billion for Russian gas and oil. It's a billion dollars a day. Mm. So I would compare uh, uh, Prime Minister Johnson's promise of $130 million of support that Ukraine would get in the nearest future. In the meantime, European countries are paying Russia a billion dollar a day. So at this, at this rate, when everybody is supporting us with one hand, but actually paying money to Russia to continue the war, uh, we have uh, uh, questionable chances to win it right now. We have questionable chances to win the war soon. And we all know what an ongoing conflict is creating. It's like the worst situation in all. Yes. The ongoing yeah. conflict will get more refugees to European countries. Uh, ongoing conflict with, will get more weapons to European countries, illegal weapons. Ongoing conflict will create food shortage crisis in the world. So uh, I have like doubts on that the European leaders do have a plan. Mm. And this is why we are expecting Boris Johnson or President Biden, somebody of the democratic world to step up and actually to lead, to lead the pack and say, okay, this is what we are going to do. Mm. Because I do not see a um, plan that every single European country would support. Okay. Everybody is just trying to look after themselves. And this is what creating money to Russia. Um, Kira, I'm going to talk about a specific European leader in a second because there obviously, is obviously an election ongoing in, in France and, 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 and all of this is relevant really to what's happening in Ukraine. But I wanted to ask you about, um, it, you know, we've, we've, we've looked ahead to, to what might unfold in the east um, of Ukraine as Russia say they're going to, you know, concentrate their attacks there. But in terms of the rest of Ukraine, you know, around Kyiv, um, the stuff that we have seen, the confirmation that we have seen of of what Russia have have left behind this, the uh, the prosecutor general of Ukraine saying that twelve hundred bodies have been found. Are there other parts of Ukraine where we are yet to get confirmation of of what has happened? So I have been to Bucha and Borodyanka and all the places in the outskirts of Kiev. I have witnessed the results of Russian. Uh, crimes and atrocities uh, myself. And I can tell you, this is something that you never want to be repeated to mm. your country, to your people. This is something that will stay with you forever. And these are the things that are unimaginable. And we right now know that there are more places like that. Kira, I want to ask you a final question, if I may, about what's going on in, in France. I know this is not the top of your... Um, priorities right now, but you were talking about European leaders working together and having a plan and and not looking at their their kind of own self interest. Now Emmanuel Macron has been you know very instrumental in trying before the invasion of Ukraine to try to get uh, Vladimir Putin to see sense. I mean that didn't fail, but you know he you could say that he tried his best. He's now really fighting for his pol political life, and 
it may be that come the 24th of April that he, you know, he is not the president of France, that it is Marine Le Pen. Do you have any concerns uh, about a change in leadership in France? Of course, we do have concerns, especially that Marine Le Pen was very adamant about uh, being Putin's friend, being a supporter, and uh, making sure that she is uh, um, she's using it for her political career, for her to being re-elected, her relations with Russia. So yes, we are concerned. We may not be extremely happy with the amount of support we are getting from the current French French leadership, mm. but uh, it's just what we what we can anticipate from her is uh, far worse. 